welcome to Daily Charge with Mountaintop Life Daily Devotional. Today is the 4th of March 2024 and we shall be looking into the Word of God. But as always, before we do that, let us go into the prayers. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you because it is not of our power, neither is it of our might that we are able to see the light of this day, but it's of your doing, it's of your great will. It's of your compassion that we're able to see the light of this day. Father, we return all glory, all honor, all adoration back to your holy name. May your name be highly exalted in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that as we go about our activities today, as we go into the word of God today, Father, we pray that your word will dwell richly in our lives, it will bless and prosper our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of everything, Lord, we shall have full cause to glorify your holy name alone in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Beloved, we shall be um, looking into a, an interesting topic which started a few days ago, which is keep on believing. That's the second part. And our memory verse for today shall be taken from the book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36, which reads, For ye have need of patience, that after that ye have done the will of God, ye might receive his promise. Again, for ye have need of patience, not the word patience there, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. Beloved, with persistent faith, you will fulfill your colorful destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, beloved just as the topic say, keep on believing. Yesterday, we emphasized that every believer needs to demonstrate persistent faith. Some battles will not be won. Some problems will not be solved unless you demonstrate persistent and rock-like faith. One that continues to believe God in the face of trials and temptation that span a long time. Also, we added that such was the kind of faith that Abraham and Sarah exhibited before they got Isaac. It was the kind of faith that got Samuel and Anna. It is the kind of faith you need today. Beloved, just as we have read, in the face of trials, in the face of um, tribulations, you need to have faith in God. Keep believing in Him. I know that as human beings, when faced with um, critical challenges, we tend to seek for help. We tend to, sometimes we tend to lose faith in God and we try to lean on our own understanding to find solutions to the problems or the challenges we are going through. Especially with the kind of world we live in today where you have, you know, suggestions from different quarters. You have your family there saying, oh, have you tried this? Have you tried that? You have your colleagues at work saying, oh, have you gone here? Have you gone there? You have your neighbors at home saying, oh, have you done this? Have you done that? Beloved, in the midst of all this noise, in the midst of all these suggestions, where do you stand with God? Is your faith still intact? Everyone will bring in their suggestions. You have so many voices ringing in your head. You have a long list of suggestions in your journal. Beloved, where is the voice of God in all of this that you are passing through? In what way are you holding on to Him? The songwriter says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Why? Because we do not bring them to God. We've decided to lean on our own understanding, to seek for help ourselves. Beloved, I would like you to know that there are some situations, some critical, strong challenges that, you know, happen to humans. Yes, we humans. And what we don't know is that it is God that wants to take his full glory, not man. He doesn't want man to share his glory in that particular situation. So, if you like, spend X amount of years, X amount of time trying to seek solution of your own accord. If God has made up his mind that in this particular situation, I want to have the final say, 
in this particular situation, everybody will acknowledge that I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. Beloved, there's nothing you can do. Let me just state that uh, out clearly. I'm sure you must have heard testimonies of people who have said, oh, they, um, they were looking for the fruit of the womb for, for X amount of years, for 20 years, 30 years. Oh, they went to the herbalist, they did this, they went to the doctor, they did this. Some even traveled out, those that have the money, traveled out on the country to seek for medical attention. Some will even tell you the kind of things they have swallowed, but also no avail, until they came back to the feet of Jesus and cried at his feet, Father, I have done everything in my power. Now, help me. Help me. And they keep leaning on, leaning on, in faith, in prayers. Then you see God, you know, some of us refer to him as God of the 11th hour. After the first hour has gone, the second hour has gone, the third hour, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh hour has gone, up to the 11th hour. When all hope is gone, that's when God comes in. When you've lost faith in, in, the, in, the, in the, medical apparatuses, uh, the medical apparatus of the doctors, you've, you, you as a person has lost faith in, in the herbalist you are consulting with. And the God of the 11th hour, which you have now resorted to, that's why I know our Father and the Lord used to encourage us that in everything we do, do not, do not make God your last resort. Immediately that challenge is coming and make him your first resort and hold on to him. Yes, there will be forces. There will be, there will be uh, external forces contending with the voice of God, contending with the promises of God. You need to hold on to his promises. You need to hold on. I can say this because I've been there before. I've been in that situation before where I just think that it is, it's, it's only God that, you know, that can save, that can, that can help me. I've been involved in a, in a car accident before and I was under the car and the car was rolling up to the extent that the car went to eat the window of, of a particular house. And I was right under the car, rolling there. At that situation, at that point, I knew that if I like, let me shout mommy, mommy. If I like, let me shout doctor. If I like, let me shout anything. It is only God that can save me at that, at that instance. So I can say this because I've been there, I've experienced it. And there are situations that comes up in your life that it's, it's, it's just, God just wants to take his glory. And there's nothing anybody can, there's not, no, no amount of effort you can, you can put into, you know, trying to find solution. That's why our Father and Lord encourages us to make our God our first resort. When you are facing, passing through that challenges, consult with God. Persevere in place of prayer, in place of praises. Persevere, persevere in place of prayer. Make, make, make your knees useful at the altar of prayer. Because that's where the solution is. The, so, the solution is not with herbalists. It's not with contending voices that are contending with the voice of God. The solution is not there. It is with God. And that is why we are being encouraged to hold on. Now, our mother and the Lord used to sing a particular hymn. She used to say, Oh, keep on believing, God will answer prayer. Keep on believing, never despair. Though you be every lady, nobody that we care. Remember, God still loves you and He answers prayer. He created us. He is the only one that knows the number of the hairs on our head. He is the only one that owns the breath we breathe. He is the only one that knows when the heartbeat starts and when it stops. So why not trust in him? He created us in his own image and likeness. Remember that he answers prayers. And as much as he answers prayers, he loves us as his children. So, beloved, let us always make God our first resort in whatever we are going through. Be it a good situation, be it a bad situation, be it in, in maybe once you embark on a particular project. It doesn't have to be health challenges, no. It could, be, it could be even in the, in the course you want to go and study in school. Make him your first resort. In marital issues, make him your first resort. Some people tend to take their marital issues to third party. Make God your first. Make him that third born, that third person in your marriage. And see God work in your favor. Let's take a short break right now and we'll be right back. Thank you. 
stop them before they stop you with this seven step agenda. Destroy every satanic image carved in your name. Decree that powers wishing you dead will carry your evil loads. Nullify satanic prophecy against your destiny. Nullify by fire every evil dark prayers against your prayers. Acquire the fighting spirit that will secure your dominion. Crush every opposition against your possession. Quench them before they quench you. It's the March Special Mana Water Trio. 13th, 20th and 27th of March 2024. Dr. D.K. Olukoya, the General Overseer, Mount of the Fire and Miracles Ministries, will be ministering live from the International Headquarters, Lagos, Nigeria. The March Special Mana Water Trio. Stop them before they stop you. Come tear down every cauldron in your line of pursuit and acquire the armor to break through. 13th, 20th, and 27th of March, 2024. Come with sand from your environment each day of the meeting for 30 p.m. Jesus is Lord. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. Welcome back to Daily Charge. Beloved, the devil knows that your victory is tied to your unwavering and persistent faith. That is why he attacks believers' faith. He did it to the patriarchs, he did it to Jesus, he did it to Peter and Paul, among others. On one occasion, Jesus told Peter that the enemy wanted his faith to fail, so as to truncate his ministry and destiny, as well as the glorious things the Lord used him for later in his life. Thank God that Jesus prayed for Peter and aborted the devil's agenda. Dear listeners, no matter what the enemy brings your way, don't allow your faith to fail or waver. Keep on believing on our all-powerful and ever-faithful God. He still answers prayers. Trust this timing. Also, it will come through for you in Jesus' name. Are you listening to this broadcast right now and you are asking yourself, I'm just here, I'm trying to um, trust God, but I don't know what to do. What can I do to keep believing, to keep trusting in Him? Beloved, there are few things you can do to keep um, your faith alive in God. And what are the things you can do to keep your faith alive in God? Engage in regular and earnest prayers. You can't overemphasize the impact of prayers. You can't, you can't underpray. And you can't overpray. You have to keep praying. So, beloved, you have to engage in regular and earnest prayer. Pour out your heart to God, expressing your concerns, expressing your fears. He's the only one that truly understands our fears. He's the only one that understands our concerns. Why? Because he created us of his own image and likeness. So beloved, pour out your heart, your heart to God, letting him know your fears, your challenges, everything you are going through. Also, engage in scripture readings. Engage in scripture. So, so many of us don't know that this word of god is is not just a is not just a book it's not just a, a a an ordinary book this is a life manual to help us navigate through life but so many people have not yet come to that realization why because they see the bible as uh, is a holy book that's what they consider the bible as no when you open this bible you understand that god is a healer when you open the scriptures, you understand that he is a God of times and seasons. In most situations you are passing through, it is in this scripture that you get words of affirmations, words of, of promises, what God has promised concerning his children in, in, in every area is in the word of God. So don't see the Bible as just a manual or a book. See it as a, a spiritual manual that God has put in place for us to navigate through life and life's challenges. Beloved, um, during trials also, meditate on verses that speak to your situation. That's why I said this Bible is not just a book. There are verses, there are, there are chapters in the scripture that speaks to every situation you are going through. Just that you don't know. Why? Because obviously you don't study the word of God. Have a study, have, have, have a, 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 a pattern 
at which you use in studying the word of God. It is in studying the word of God that you begin to experience, <clears throat> you begin to see situations, you begin to see scriptures that speaks concerning that situation you are passing through. And before you know it, you begin to hold on to it. It begins to build up your faith. Your faith keeps building, it keeps building, it keeps building to the extent that if that situation you are going to, it becomes, it, it, it becomes something that you've forgotten. Because at that moment, you are just dedicated to God. You are dedicated to reading more of the scriptures. It begins to build up your faith. You, in fact, you know why I said that sometimes it's a situation you are passing through, God wants to take the glory. Because it brings you to a place of spiritual maturity with God. Because after you've gone through that situation, you've built up, your faith has, has become so built up that you have the, the scriptures living in you. You eat it. You live it. You speak it. You, you it, 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 it becomes an aura around you. That when you speak, you can't speak without, with, with, without the word of God imbibed in, 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 in what you are talking about. You, you find out that there are some curse words that you've been using before. You know, I look at some of the youth these days. They, they, they so much, you know, um, they, can't, they can't speak five sentences without them using curse words. Nobody needs, to, nobody needs to tell you that, oh, this person is, you know, you know where the person is. So, beloved, it's when you study the word of God that some words, there's some particular parlance in English language will not become used to you. You know, I was telling my husband recently, I said, while I was very young, I remember some words I, I can use, I can use those court words conveniently. He said, but now I, I see them, it's, I see them as irritation. Why? Because as much as you spend time with the word of God, it brings about spiritual growth. The kind of words you use before, the, the, the way you communicate, it, it changes. When you are typing messages to people, in fact, without you even knowing, you start, you know, putting the word or infusing the word of God into the message you are typing to people. Oh, somebody is sharing a particular story with you. And in that story, the person is sharing with you, you are responding to the person and you are trying to bring the word of God into what that person has just told you. It shows, it shows spiritual growth. They don't need to, you don't need to tell anybody that, oh, eh, I'm a giant in the spirit. I am this. No, 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 no. You don't need to tell anybody that. The virtue that people see in you will speak forth for you. The aura that comes around you in your mode of dressing, in your mode of communication with people, it, it, it goes to show for it. So, beloved, in the place of tarry, while you are tarrying before God in prayers, you, for, you tend to forget about the issue that even brought you to God in prayers. Because by the time you, you start worshipping God, you start calling him names that, that pleases his heart. At that moment, you forget about your troubles. You forget and that is what God wants. He wants us to come to him, acknowledging him as, as God of all, as, as a superior person in this situation. Not we going to the doctor and giving and, and doctors taking the glory. No. There are situations that he wants to take glory over. He wants you, you know, by the time you are sharing that testimony, he brings others to Christ. That is, that is the result of what God wants. In that, that, in that testimony you are sharing, it builds up other people's faith in God. It makes other people have, have a change of mind. But if you do not go through that situation, you won't come to a place of spiritual maturity with God. And, uh, 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 and as a result of that, you are not, you are not going to get closer to God. So there are some situations it, it, it tends to push us into that, you know, brings about about spiritual growth. I will share my little experience with us. You know, while I was growing back then, I was I was of this. Um, I wanted to. I was telling my dad then that I want to finish the scriptures. Oh, I want to finish the scriptures. And he, he got me a Bible. He said, "Okay, this is your Bible. Read the scriptures." And I started reading from Genesis. I read, and as I was reading, I was just a young girl then, but you know, I just wanted to read the Bible. That was all. I wanted to finish it from Pali to Pali. That was my challenge. I didn't, I was not after anything. But along the line, as I got to the book of Malachi, that was, as I finished reading the book of Malachi, beloved, I had my first encounter with God in our sitting room. And that was the first encounter I had as a very young child. And that encounter molded my life up to what I am today. So nobody can tell me otherwise that, oh, God, God is this. Oh, no, uh, the Bible is not, oh, no, no, no. This is how you should walk. No, my life, because I, at that moment, I received the blueprint of my life and I lived according to it. Why? Because I had that encounter. I didn't have that encounter at the place of, at the place of, oh uh, no, because I'm going to church and tribulation. No, because I just picked up the word of God. I just wanted to read it. I just wanted to be able to boast to my friends that yes, I've read the Bible from back to back. 
you know but that situation in that in my own ignorance i was able to receive a divine visitation from god so beloved tarrying in the place of prayer and also ensuring that the word of god becomes your daily guide not just a book that you want to read no it is not a book it contains it contains the answers to to the problem not just a problem to life to life generally to life generally beloved let's let's i want to encourage us all to to always um um study the scripture also i would like for you in the play uh, to also reflect on past experiences where god has been faithful you know in the place of where you you, you don't know how to keep believing just reflect on, on 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 past experiences where god has been faithful to you where god has come through for you you cannot say you don't have one single testimony all your life or you, you've not been god has not been faithful to you all your life even you being alive is a blessing so you you need to reflect on past on past um, blessings on on on, on past um, yes on past um, things of the past things that have happened in the past that god has done for you reflect on them and be thankful be thankful don't just carry your body and you're just you know talking about your body your body is your problem is your problem no reflect reflect on those things that god has done for you in the past and begin to thank him for it begin to thank him for it begin to call him names that he wants to hear beloved you see god come to for you let us take a short break right now and we'll be right back thank you for listening Through your handheld gadgets, you can now have access to your daily devotional, The Mountain Top Live, for the year 2024, Volume 9, available through download on the Google Play Store and the iOS App Store. Download yours today. Mountain Top Live Daily Devotional, Volume 9, a life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional for 2024 is now available, Volume 9. Get a copy today and some for those you care about and leave your days filled with the presence of the Lord. The Mountain Top Life Daily Devotional, Volume 9. Life-changing encounter with a God that answered by fire. Get a copy, visit www.mfmebooks.com or any MFM bookshop near you. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries, surely the Lord is here. Welcome back to Daily Charge. Beloved, do not give up on your dreams or vision. Do not lose faith in God. The faith that fails never produces good results. Keep on believing. Elijah prayed for rain that God had promised. He prayed with precision and with passion. But the answer did not come straight away. He sent his servant to look toward the sea for a sign of rain. At the seventh time, the servant saw a little cloud the size of a man's hand. Rain eventually fell after seven years of droughts. Praying seven times indicates persistence in Elijah's faith. That's according to 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 41 to 44. Though anointed, David did not get to the throne for several years. As he went through tests and trials, he kept believing God he made good his promise to him in due time. Similarly, Joseph got the dream of his colorful destiny from God as a teenager. Yet, for a decade, over a decade, he went through trials before God intervened and fulfilled his dream in a grand style. Beloved, you can see biblical examples of our fathers in faith who tarried in the place of prayer. Prophet Elijah sent the servant to go and check for the sign of rain seven good times. Seven times before the servant came back and said, Yes, I see something that looks like a hand, a hand of drought. Beloved, same thing goes with uh goes for um, Joseph in the Bible. He had that dream while he was still in his father's house that um, they were buying before him. 
his brothers were bowing before him. He had a dream, but where did that dream come to manifestation? From the prison. You know, while he was in the prison, you could have thought that, ah, uh -uh. God, but well, this is not our agreement now. Nah. This is not what you showed me. Even though the dream came from God, the message came from God, yes. Remember, the Bible makes us understand that the vision is yet for an appointed hour. And at the appointed hour, it, it will come in a grand style. In, in a way that people far and wide will glorify God with you. So, beloved, as much as you are, you are um, in the place of, of, of waiting on God, do not lose faith. Keep on believing in God. And at the right time, He will come through for you. He will answer all your prayers. He will grant all your heart's desires according to His will and purpose for you. So, beloved, I'd like us to go into our prayers right now. I'd like us to take the first prayer point like this. Say, 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 I will keep on believing because God still answers prayers. Say that. I will keep on believing because God still answers prayers. Pronounce that. Proclaim that with faith in your heart. Say it. I will keep on believing because God still answers prayers. Say that. Say that. Say that. I want you to say that. I will keep on believing because God still answers prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, give me the grace that is big enough to take me to my promised land. Father, give me the grace that is big enough to take me to my promised land. I want you to say that with faith in your heart. Father, give me the grace that is big enough to take me to my promised land. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to also pray like this. I receive the grace to be unstoppable and to slay giants. In the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to be unstoppable and to slay giants. In the name of Jesus, I receive the grace to be unstoppable and to slay giants. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, give me the faith of Elijah to lock and open the heavens. In the name of Jesus, Father, give me the faith of Elijah to lock and to open heavens. In the name of Jesus, Father, give me the faith of Elijah to lock and to open heavens. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, give me the faith that enthroned David in spite of challenges and oppositions he faced. Father, give me the faith that enthroned David in spite of the challenges and oppositions he faced. In the name of Jesus, the faith that enthroned David despite the challenges and oppositions he faced. In Jesus' name, amen. My Father, give me the persevering and dream-fulfilling faith that you gave Joseph. My Father, give me the persevering and dream-fulfilling faith that you gave Joseph. My father, give me the persevering and dream-fulfilling faith that you gave Joseph in Jesus' name. And lastly, I'm going to pray like this. Oh God, arise and answer your name in my life. In Jesus' name, I pray like that. Oh God, arise and answer your name in my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you for joining us. See you again next time. God bless you. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. I decree that today it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. The Lord God that dwelleth in Zion will move you forward in a new way in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil shall befall you this day, neither shall any plague move near your camp. Wherever you go, the favor of the Almighty shall be upon you. Your life shall be plugged into the socket of divine favor, divine restoration, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the evil present in this day, I bind them and I cast them out. You shall not be part of the evil that is spreading around in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make you head and never detail in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. I soak the whole of this day in the blood of Jesus. You are going in your coming out shall be blessings. The hand of God shall be mighty upon you. I cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Have a wonderful day, beloved. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen.